uh, mid-season showdown. I am Joe Sour Cream Picorni, uh, commentating here today. And uh, today, our top four match that we're going to be viewing is going to be Nate, who we just saw on stream, and Adam, uh, who I actually think this is his first time on stream. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting match. I don't think these players played during Swiss, but um, it, it is an interesting matchup. So, if we look at Nate's team, we're going to see Nate has that Tapu Bulu, that Mawile, that Politoed, Gothitelle, Incineroar, and, of course, Ludicolo. And Adam has that Venusaur, Charizard, Landorus Incarnate, Tyranitar, Incineroar, and Tapu Fini. One of the interesting things on Adam's team is that he has... That double weather uh, that we often see with Charizard, we see that Tyranitar to set up the Sand Stream, and maybe reset that, and so you can reset that Sun maybe a little bit later, or vice versa with that Tyranitar. And uh, I also think the Venusaur is a very interesting mod for this matchup. Uh, Venusaur does usually carry a Poison move, just be able to delete that Tapu Bulu, not have to worry about it, as well as doing a lot of damage to that Ludicolo and also being able to Giga Drain that Politoed or um, Energy Ball if it is carrying it. But uh, one thing that it does have to look out for is that Gothitelle. Gothitelle is going to be able to do a good bit of damage if it is carrying a Psychic move, but occasionally Gothitelles sometimes lose an attacking move to make sure that they are able to have all of the things that they need. So I think that Venusaur is honestly in a pretty good spot, but we see our, we're in team preview here. So once again, the teams are Venusaur. Uh, for Adam, we see Venusaur, Charizard, Landorus Incarnate, Tyranitar, Incineroar, and Tapu Fini. And for Nate, we see Tapu Bulu, Mawile, Politoed, Gothitelle, Incineroar, and Ludicolo. So I think Nate's team is going to have a rough matchup against this because that's uh, that rain is going to have a hard time staying up with two different p uh, potential weathers on there. I suppose there is a chance that that could be Zard X, but just based on the team comp, it most likely is going to be Char uh, Zard Y, but you never know. Uh, there have been stranger things to happen. And another interesting thing about Adam's team is that we see it's actually he's actually running the Landers Incarnate. Um, I feel like the Landers Incarnate has picked up a little bit more popularity since the uh, uh, increasing amounts of uh, Intimidate Mons, namely Incineroar. But... Let's hop right into the game. Uh, both of these players, I'm sure, are excited to get into it. So, let's hop into it. Once again, we are going to see Adam versus Nate at the top four of the fourth lane midseason show. Alright, as we see that Tyranitar and Incineroar lead off, and we see the Politoed and Ludicolo lead off for Nate. All right, so we do see that that Sandstream actually is going to trigger um, before that Incineroar. So once again, maybe giving you some a little bit of information. Then the Incineroar is intimidated, does go off. And then actually the Politoed is the slowest uh, ability on the field that we can see right now, which is very nice for Nate, having him have a chance to get off that faster fake out against that Incineroar, maybe getting off a Scald against that Tyranitar, or... If he's feeling a little bit risky, he can just go for that powerful Water MZ onto either of these mons and do a whole lot of damage, most likely knocking both of them out. Or either of them out, rather. Um, so that, honestly, is a pretty good lead off for uh, Nate. He got a lot of good information, but I mean, also, Adam got the same amount of information, but right now, just from like a lead matchup, I think Nate is definitely going to be in the lead from it. So we see that Tyranitar switch out, trying to preserve that sand for later. As we do see the Venusaur come in, Venusaur is going to be a very hard thing for uh, Nate to deal with. That uh, Venusaur, when it Mega Evolves, or pardon me, if it Mega Evolves, rather, it will be not taking very much damage from an Ice Beam or even from like fire moves that we might see. But as we do see, he does have uh, three potential Megas, so we might not actually see that being Mega Venusaur. Often when you see a Charizard on a team, you can think that it might be a Grass Pledge or a more supportive while also being offensive with Sleep Powder and Chlorophyll. But who knows how this Venusaur is trained. Only time will tell. Alright, as we do see that Ludicolo switch on out, as we see the Gothitelle switch in, stopping any of those mods from switching out. As we see the Venusaur switch out, going right back into that Tyranitar, getting rid of that rain, putting the Sandstorm right back up. And we see Incineroar going for the Flare Blitz, 
uh, going to do a little bit of damage to that Gothitel. Gothitel is a pretty defensive mon, doing a little bit under half. As we see Parish Song actually go off right away, trying to buy as much time as he can. Uh, so right now both of those mons are actually locked in, unless uh, either of them have any switch initiative moves like U-Turn. So right now I think we might see that Gothitel protect and then a switch out into probably Ludicolo or something else that might be able to provide him with a little more uh, defense against both of these dark types that are going to be pretty nasty for that Gothitelle to stay in against. But if I'm Nate, once again, I'm not I'm not in the worst of positions, but I'm certainly not in the best. So that uh, Incineroar is definitely going to be doing a lot of damage against that Gothitelle, as well as the Tyranitar, which we did see is actually very, very fast. We can most likely expect it to be um, on the faster end, maybe uh, even like a Scarf at this point, but we haven't seen enough information about that yet to really call it. Alright, as we see the Mawile coming out, going to intimidate those mons. As we see, uh, both of these physical attackers are not going to appreciate that drop. As we see, the Protect coming out from Politoed. And a Dragon Dance, actually, from Tyranitar. That definitely does let us know that it is not, in fact, going to be a Scarfed variant. As it does get that plus one speed, though, from it. As we see a knockoff go right into that Politoed. Incineroar is going to be buffeted by that Sandstorm. Alright, so once again, we do see the speed tiers once again. Um, so right now, that uh, Tyranitar is currently sitting at neutral attack, but plus speed, and that Incineroar is not doing too good at minus one attack. Um, so that Incineroar, Incineroar is one of those mods where you really are okay with switching it in and out and in and out, because it does have Fake Out, it has the Intimidate. And it also is like pretty defensive of a mon, so we can't even handle the abuse that often happens when you do that to it. So I think it's definitely going to be an interesting turn. I don't think we're going to see that Incineroar stay in for much longer, even though we are seeing a, um, pardon me, a potential Mega Mawile from Nate's side. I think it's going to be a little bit too um, intimidating, ironically, for him to stay in. All right, and we do see that Gothitelle switch right back in as we see the Protect coming out from Mawile. And we see the Darkium, uh, pardon me, I think we see the Darkium Z, yes, uh, coming from that Tyranitar. Darkium Z is going to be doing a lot of damage to anything on the field right now, even through a Protect that still should do a decent amount. But we just, uh, so we do see it going into that Mawile slot, maybe doing a, I would say, 10%. Yeah, a little bit under it looks like. But, unfortunately, that is a kind of a bit of a waste in Z-Move, as we do see it Flare Blitz into it. Alright, and we are going to see that these, uh, Parish Counters are ticking down. This is its last turn to get on out, and I don't know if Incineroar is going to be able to do it. If it doesn't have a U-turn... Or any, or any other thing that can get it out of here. It's not going to be in a great spot right now. Um, if you're Nate, I would most likely just try to preserve your Pokemon on the field at this point. Maybe a Protect, as we do see that Mawile switch on out, going right back in to that uh, Ludicolo. So we do see the Protect coming out from Gothitelle, trying to preserve itself so it can also set up that Trick Room if necessary later on in the game. As we do see that U-Turn coming out, so that Incineroar uh, lives to fight another day as it does return back to his trainer. Uh, so the only Mon to get caught out by that Parish Song is going to be that Tyranitar, but that is losing one of the weather options that um, Adam did have, making that Rain Mode a little bit scarier. So right now, we're just waiting for uh, Adam to really think about what Pokemon he is going to want to bring in. All right, as we do see that Feeny come in. Feeny uh, is going to, uh, is typically something that we're going to see be a little bit more uh, defense, or especially defensively trained, trying to get a little bit more bulk going. All right, as we do see that uh, Paris counter count to zero. For Tyranitar. Tyranitar go, goes ahead and faints and returns back to his trainer. So now, uh, honestly, if you're Adam, you might want to go right back out to Incineroar. Uh, Incineroar might actually be faster than that 
uh, Ludicolo without that rain boost. So we do see that Incineroar come back out, able to potentially fake out either of these mods. And also that Feeny, Feeny all often carries Calm Mind. A Calm Mind Feeny could be pretty bad for uh, Nate if he's not able to handle it very quickly. Unfortunately for uh, Adam though, that Ludicolo is a grass type and will be able to start dealing out some pretty big hits if it is going to uh, start trying to set up in, fr in front of it. But if I'm if I'm Nate, I'm not super happy with my positioning. I definitely think I want to get the rain back up if I was him. Um, trying to get your weather back in your control, get out everything out of there. And then honestly, at this point, if you're able to knock out just one more Mon, you want you have that uh, the ability to just go for a Parasong again, and then wait three turns, and you have the victory. All right, as we see the. Uh, Guy that will just hang on with a sliver of HP, uh, popping its Aguave Berry. As we see the Heal Pulse come out, healing up his Ludicolo. Heal Pulse is one of those interesting moves where we see it uh, meander on and off of certain Pokemon. And Gothitelle happens to be one of those Pokemon that is the most common to see it on. I'm not going to say common because you still don't often see it. But, uh, so now, honestly... Nate is not in the greatest of advantage uh, spots in terms of advantage. He does have a water type against um, Nate's uh, fire type, but I mean, it's not going to be wanting to take a Flare Blitz because it is neutral damage because of its grass and grass typing, and also that grass type could be a helpful a helpful thing against that Tapu Fini. But we see Incineroar uh, is going to be able to do a good a bit to that. Uh, Gothitelle. Gothitelle not going to want to be wanting to take too many dark type moves or even any type of move, honestly, from a very strong Incineroar. So we do see it's uh, Gothitelle switch on out for that Poliwhirl. Poliwhirl going to head set up that rain. Now that it's raining once again, uh, we are going to see a very fast and, in fact, very strong uh, Ludicolo Z move. I predict we're probably going to see this into the uh, Incineroar slot here just to try to get rid of it as soon as possible. Alright, so we do see it. I do think that is a bit of an overkill on it. Incineroar is a very, bulk pardon me, very bulky Pokemon, but I still think a regular old Scald would have been able to do the job. But we see a Moonblast coming out from that Tapu Fini, going into that Politoed, doing a good bit of damage, bringing it to around 50% HP. So now, once again, Nate is in a pretty good position. That Venusaur is really going to be rough for it. I think what he really has to do is he has to focus just getting off that Trick Room. I think the Trick Room is, or pardon me, not Trick Room, the Parasong is his way to win this game. Venusaur is just going to be able to stick around and without really anything to knock it out, uh, that Gothitelle does have the ability to, if it is able to stick around, keep hammering out those Psychics. But I don't think that's really going to work out too well, as we do see the Gothitelle switch in. And we see that mega, uh, that me it actually is a Mega Venusaur. Interestingly enough, normally you don't often see a uh, Mega Venusaur paired with a Mega Charizard, um, just because you can only have one Mega in a game. But I do think that uh, this is an interesting call for this uh, meta, because Mega Venusaur is so good. Uh, because it is able to just sit around and drink up all the health that it needs from those leech seeds and also from uh, Giga Drains. Alright, as we do see the special attack drop, which is a little bit unfortunate uh, for Nate, Sludge Bomb comes off and makes it so that special attack drop does not matter. Alright, so I think we might have to see that, uh, that, pardon me, that Politoed come back in. Alright, as we do see that Mawile come back in, actually. Mawile is not in the worst of positions right now. If he is able to get off that, if he is able to get off that Trick Room from the Gothitelle, I think he could be in a good spot. Um, if he is able to get it off and start doing uh, Iron Head shenanigans, maybe even uh, doing tons of damage to that Feeny and just making it so it's a one-on-one, -on -one is probably his best bet. So uh, looking forward. Um, Nate is going to have a pretty uh, rough time getting back into this game. Even though Mega Mawile is a very strong mod, Mega Venusaur is a very, very bulky, and it's going to have a hard time hitting through it. 
we do see the skull go up, doing a good bit of damage. Unfortunately for Adam, that uh, that rain is kind of working against him right now. As we do see that Gothitelle go down, Ironhead comes out, is going to pick up that KO onto Feeny, and now we're going to see a. I honestly think we're going to see a war of attrition here um, against that. Uh, t pardon me, that Mega Mawile, and we're going to see the Politoed. And I think right now at this point. We're just going to see a war of attrition of Iron Head and then Leech Seed and then just waiting and waiting. But I think I think Nate might have this game if he is able to get off that Parish Song. But that's going to be a little bit rough because uh, uh, Venusaur is most likely faster. As we do see the Leech Seed go off into that Maul Wild slot, making it so he is able to just get off a little bit of HP per turn, as that does do a lot of damage. I highly underestimated how much damage that was going to do. So now we might be able to actually see that Mawile just pick up the KO, unless that Venusaur is able to get off another Protect, uh, getting the double Protect. I don't think that Mawile is going to have any trouble picking up the KO at this point. Um, so that is pretty much, I think it's going to have to be a sealed game here. That helping hand all seals, uh, I think that pretty much seals it up in Adam's favor. As he does go for that protect, um, I think that's just stalling out. Maybe trying to get a little bit of more information. I don't know if Nate has revealed um, helping hand to Adam before, but if not, that might have been a little bit more information than Nate really needed to inform his opponent. Maybe. Venusaur at this point, um, if it is able to get off that Giga Drain and do a lot of damage to the Politoed, that might be uh, that might be a good way for him to get back into this game, but he does see that that Politoed does have Helping Hand, so unless he is carrying Sleep Powder, maybe HP Fire might do enough. At this point, I don't think it's going to be enough though. But we do get some important damage calcs for later, so that Politoed was able to hang on with enough HP from about 50% against that Giga Drain. We do also get a little bit more information with that Politoed's Berry proccing, meaning that it's a Wiki Berry. Iron Head comes on out doing a lot of damage. Venusaur just hangs on with just a sliver of HP. Go ahead, going to recover back just a little bit with that lead seed, but I don't think that that is going to change this game's outcome. I think Nate still has this game all but wrapped up. Mawile, once again, most likely having the ability to just go for Sucker Punch. Oh, as we actually do see the lead seed come out, this might change how the game is going to finish. As we do see the Paris song come out, so I think that game is over. Mawile right now pretty much can just go for a Sucker Punch. Uh, because if the Venusaur can't protect, um, if the, pardon me, if the Venusaur is not able to get rid of those Mons in a very quick fashion, I just think it's going to fall to Paris song. And because of that, we do see, uh, we do see that it's just going to fall to the Paris song. that Zard actually carries um, Dragon Dance and Thunder Punch, so he's actually going to do a lot of damage to Robert as we do see the players shake hands, uh, uh, showing that this game is pretty much sealed up. Alright, so interesting contest. I, I, did pre I thought this game was probably going to go in Nate's favor, but looking forward, the Parish Club it is possible that uh, Venusaur, if it does carry Earthquake, Venusaur does get Earthquake, which kind of hurts the Red Blue. He could have just gone for that Earthquake and not gone for the Sleep Punch. Alright, as we see that Venusaur go for the Helping Hand. And Giga Drain going out into that, and it 
he was able to knock it out. Uh, so because that poly jump did close to there, uh, it was only going to be the f uh, that and all of the last two things in the game. So this iron head is not going to be able to do enough damage to knock it out. Oh, with a crit, it certainly will. All right, so that game was over regardless of Parish Song. All right, so good game. Uh, so it does look like Adam is going to be taking that game. Or pardon me, not Adam. Nate is going to win that first game, though. Pardon me. Um, but moving forward for Adam, I definitely think Adam has the urge here that he needs to win. So that Zard, uh, one of his other potential Mechas, is definitely going to have a lot of information for him. Or is going to have a lot of potential information for him. But we do see these teams once again. Once again, they are Venusaur, Charizard, Landorus, Incarnaform, uh, Tyranitar, Incineroar, Tapu Fini. And then for Nate, we see that Tapu Zulu, Mawile, Politoed, Gothitelle, Incineroar, and Poly or pardon me, and Ludicolo. So we see Nate's already locked in, maybe happy with how he played that last game, thinking I can just go with the same thing, or he knew exactly what he wanted to do and change it up. And maybe uh, with that little bit of time that Adam has left, he can predict some of the changes that he wants to make, or some of the changes that he thinks that Nate is going to make. Alright, as we see, we are almost heading into this battle. So last time, I think that that Politoed's, um, uh, that Politoed's Parish Song really paid off for him. Able to knock out, I believe, three of the four mons. Or, pardon me, I, I only got one mon, but it did steal out that last game without that crit. But we see the double player lead of Incineroar Charizard, and then the rain lead of Politoed and Ludicolo. Incineroar's uh, Intimidate coming out, not really being too much of a um, help here, just because Ludicolo typically will take care of his Fake Out, and Fake Out, you're not really using for the damage. Alright, so that Charizard is going to sit around flapping its wings, and I think we most likely will see the reveal of what Mega this Charizard is here. Incineroar probably just going to go for a Fake Out, attempting to stop any big damage coming out from Ludicolo. Or maybe um, we will see it into something. Uh, pardon me. All right, so we do see that Politoed switch on out. As we see that Gothitelle come right back in. As we do see it Mega on up. Revealing that is, it is in fact Charizard Y. Charizard Y going to switch the sunlight. So now that water attack that that Ludicolo might be going for is certainly going to be a little bit weaker, but we do just see it go for the fake out into Incineroar. And we see Heat Wave coming out for Charizard, so very nice play on Adam, Adam's end, uh, being able to assess the threat and really make a good call against Nate's uh, pl current play. So that, uh, that Gothic is definitely out of range of another one, and if it does set up the rain again, that Incineroar would not be sitting too good. If we see the rain come back out from uh, Nate's side, we could see kind of a big issue. Because right now, Adam can't switch out. Uh, he does have U-turn on the Incineroar, which he did use last game. But that um, Gothitelle is very much threatened by the knockoff potential from that Incineroar. As we see that knockoff come out from Going into the Politoed, actually knocking off his Wiki Berry, as we see the Trick Room coming out. So as we did see from the first game, we do know that the Politoed is going to have more of a chance to take this game. while uh, freeing up the switch once again for Adam now. Um, Adam being able to switch on in and out, which is a very big help, as we do see the protect coming out from Politoed. 
not wanting to take out any fakeouts or a knockoff or it's gonna be a knockoff of the TOD card. The cards are kind of OP in their way. They're good for a lot of things. The all out one I'm fortunate like all while uh, was able to dodge it. Um, get that smart card in front of me and laugh at me. Alright, so interesting we can see that Endor switch on out and we see it switch on out into that Tyranitar, getting rid of that rain, freeing up those heat whiffs to once again be at their regular power. As we do see that double actually into that Feeny. Feeny setting uh, setting up its own Misty Surge. Misty Surge being one of those abilities where it's not a super great um, ability by itself, but it stops other things from happening. Alright, so we do see that Mawile just go for the Mega, probably just going for some raw offensive power, trying to capitalize on those trickling turns that he kind of stole, honestly, from Adam with that really amazing play. As we see that play rough po out into that Tyranitar, able to pick up the KO on this less than offensive, or less than defensive um, Tyranitar. Alright, and we see some Sandstorm damage rack up. Um, so that Politoed, honestly, I'm going to be worse in position now. Um, Politoed does, I think Politoed will want to be preserved to ensure that that rain will stay up after that Charizard is left in. Charizard could throw a wrench into all of his plans. Charizard doing a lot of damage with his Heat Wave and potential Air Slash and maybe even Overheat to the entirety of his team. But we are going to see Charizard come back in getting rid of that sand and setting the sun back up. Alright, Charizard's Drought ability is going to go ahead and activate Tapu Fini, able to just not really go for Scald anymore. Scald, unfortunately, one of the best moves that it can use to hit that Maul while is not going to do too much. Zard could go for a Solar Beam if it is managing to carry it onto that Tapu Fini, or pardon me, onto that Politoed, and probably pick it up at this point. Um, also looking forward to the rest of this game, for Nate, I definitely think you want to preserve this Politoed. Politoed is really going to be the key for you to finish this game out, I think. If you don't have that, if you don't have the rain advantage, you're definitely going to be taking way too much damage to really stay in the game. Alright, as we do see the switch out of Mawile into Gothitel. Gothitel is going to be able to uh, probably hold on from a heat wave. Another heat wave, this will certainly be huge for Nate, but we see the Intimidate uh, Incineroar come back on in. Intimidating both of these special Pokemon, not really being too much of a difference. As we do see that Parish Song come out, allowing those, uh, those turns to start their count. Heat wave comes out from that Charizard. Can Gothita live it from a little bit under 50? It is not able to live it, unfortunately. That Gothitelle does get knocked out, freeing those switches right back up. Gothitelle is unfortunately not going to be able to play for the rest of this game. And I also do believe that that means uh, it's currently 3-3. Three to three. Mawile does come back in, and with Trickling Turns counting down, Mawile is really on the clock to knock out this Charizard. And also, this Incineroar. Incineroar is going to be able to take all the Skulls it wants in the rain. Or pardon me, in the sun, because the rain is currently down. So I think we definitely need to see one of these fire types get knocked out if Nate wants to be able to have a chance. Unfortunately for him, the fire types, even though he does have a rain team, are making a pretty big showing. We see the helping hand go off into that Mawile. Mawile is going to just get faked out by that Incineroar. And we see the Solar Beam actually coming out from Charizard. Solar Beam is one of those moves where you don't always see it right now because there is just so many other good options for you to run as we do see that Solar Beam go into the Politoed and knock it out. All right, and we do see that Paris count, though, starting to get a little bit low on those Mons. So moving forward, I definitely think that like, those two fire types are just going to be doing too much damage. And without an ability to get rid of that sun, I definitely think Adam probably has this game too. Looking forward though, um, for things that Nate can adjust to for game two, 
or pardon me, for game three. So Nate, I think he, if he leans more heavily into keeping that rain up, stopping that Tyranitar and those fire types, I definitely think he is in an okay position. The problem is that with two fire types, two ways to get rid of the rain, your uh, grass type and your steel type are just not having a fun time. We do see that Charizard going for Protect as the Fake Out does come out into the Tapu Fini, doing a little bit of chip damage in the Plera, going into that Fini as well. Knocking Fini just into its berry range. Fini going to munch on its berry, get back 50% of its health, and also preserving that Incineroar for a little bit later. So right now I definitely think we're going to see a switch of that Charizard into that uh, Incineroar. Incineroar going to intimidate both of those mods, and more importantly, preserving that Charizard's life. But at this point, I'm not quite sure what Nate's going to be able to do to come back. Um, that Feeny did not take enough damage to be able to get KO'd from that play rough, but we do see the Incineroar come on out, going ahead and intimidate both of those mons, but while while being the main target of it. And we do see that Watarian Z come on out from the Ludicolo. Ludicolo going to be going for it most likely into that Charizard or Incineroar slot. Because we do see that Hydro Vortex going to Whirlpool up. And it does go into that Incineroar, Incineroar? Incineroar slot. Doing not a lot of damage. That Sun and also that Sun's just too much. And as well as Incineroar's good special defense when it does have that Crystal Crest. Assuming it does. That Moon Blast going ahead and just knock out that uh, that Ludicolo. As we do see the faint, or pardon me, the knockout from the thing. Or jeez. <laughs> the faint from the player up into that Incineroar. Pardon me on that. Alright, as we do see that Charizard come out. And I think this game is pretty much over in favor for Adam. It's just too much for this one small uh, two mouth or three mouth person really to handle. As we do see it just going for protect, trying to stall out those sun turns. Alright, and Heat Wave does go into it as well as the Scald. The Scald uh, probably is trying to go for the burn because at this point Scald and Moon Blast would have done the same amount of damage. Alright, and the Sunlight does fade away though, which does give that Scald a boost, but it also weakens those uh, Heat Waves. Sucker Punch comes out, getting a little bit of information about how much damage it's going to do. Heat Wave comes out, able to pick up the KO, and Adam wins the game of two. Alright, so moving forward for Adam. If I'm Adam, I'm much more content with how I played this game. Um, but if I was him, I definitely think that Charizard was my main way of winning. Tyranitar obviously was helpful with being able to switch out those weathers as much as possible, trying to just eliminate the ability for those rain turns to really stick around. But if I was him, I think I would adjust um, probably... That Feeny was uh, helpful, but not as helpful as I really would have liked to see, personally. Um, but that being said, do you really want to bring your Venusaur? And Landry's, Landry's Inferno is not great for this matchup, so I think it's one of those things of you have to take the lesser of two evils. Alright, so we see Moon already ready to go, ta barely taking any time off those mods. Alright, so with one minute left on the clock, we do see that Adam so like, uh, looking again to Nate, I definitely think Nate played that game well, but um, he made one pretty vital mistake of letting his Gothitelle move. Gothitelle is a very key part of his strategy, just letting the Ice Punch get punished. Parasong is one of those moves where it's super high risk, super high reward. Being able to knock out a Mon with any percentage like that of damage you are able to get on the field for three turns is always nice. But let's hop into the last round of the of the most game or pardon me, the last game of this round then. So if I'm Nate, I definitely think I need to both rely I need to rely on keeping my Gothitelle and Politoed around. And those two are really what I think are going to be the pivot points on this matchup. Alright, as we do see both of them actually coming out on the first turn. As we see the Keytone Charizard 
so we do see that that char uh, the Pokeball Treetop is going to be setting up the sand stream, and we see the Drizzle come on out. But I mean, at the end of the day, Charizard is most likely just going to be able to Mega Evolve, get rid of that water, uh, get rid of the rain, and then at that point, I don't really think that that uh, Polyjuice really is going to want to stick stick around here. Being able to take a Solar Beam and then maybe turn on the Dew if Adam goes for it at the moment. But also in the same vein, that Valkatel not going to be wanting to stick around team taking a Heat Wave and a Dark EMZ. So right now, Nate is kind of on a rock and a hard place. He could double switch, but that does lose him a lot of uh, advantage. Both of his Mogs will be taking damage from Solar Blaze. So I think we probably will see that the Valkatel goes for a Protect, and we see the Polyjoy switch out. Um, a good switch right now, in my opinion, to make would probably have to be that Incineroar. Incineroar being a pretty uh, decent combo. We do just see the Ruby Cobra come out, which is nice enough. Ruby Cobra took a lot of damage last time from that uh, from that uh, Heat Wave, but we do see those double uh, that Protect coming out, starting to Rock Attack. Rock Slide coming out from Tutal, as it actually is able to dodge it. That is very nice for him, uh, for Adam there. Oh, pardon me, for Nate there. Uh, that wouldn't have done a crazy amount of damage, but any chip damage does matter when you're talking about games that can go on as long as it does not last too long. Zard Y is going to go ahead and Mega Evolve, showing us that he is the Sunny Boy once again. Alright, and I think we probably are going to see the drought or the uh, heat wave come out here, trying to eliminate as much damage as possible. Stake out comes on out from that uh, Ludicolo. Ludi uh, Ludicolo does fight that Tyranitar Flinch. The heat wave does come out, going to do a lot of damage to that Ludicolo. Definitely a two hit KO, as we do see that uh, Valkatel go for a two. So right now. He can, uh, Nate can switch that water, uh, that Polyjuke back in, cutting off the rain again, getting rid of the sun, making it so that Charizard and Heatwaves aren't going to do much. I still think that, uh, that Ludicolo still might be within range of a Heatwave, putting a KO into it. But that also is going to be pretty risky. And also with the Trick Room up now, do you really want to be still making the Ludicolo as fast as it can get? That's certainly going to be a risky play, but these players know their team very well, as you can tell by them both being here at the top four. So, taking a look at it, I definitely think Luke Cole's set. Okay, so we do see that Gothitelle switch out, definitely trying to preserve it as much as possible. I hear some audible oh no's coming from the player table, indicating something probably didn't go right for one of them. We do see the drizzle come right back up. As we do see that Water MZ coming out from Ludicolo. Uh, Ludicolo is probably going to target down either of these Mons. Honestly, there's not a bad choice here. Both of these are just so big of threats. Alright, as you do see it go into that T-Tar. T-Tar is definitely going to go down to this. Not a, not a chance. As it does go down here, one of its weathers, uh, one of Adam's weather potentials is gone once again. Heat wave gonna come on out and do not enough damage to pick up that uh, damage on Ludicolo. But he does get a crit, which is not very important against that. A crit onto that Ludicolo might have actually been able enough to pick up the KO. So Adam got a little bit lucky there. Or pardon me, Nick got a little bit lucky there that Adam did get the crit on the correct one. So we do see that see that Feeny come out. Feeny is going to be boosted by that rain's power, and is should be slower than pretty much everything on the field except for that, poly, or and that Politoed and Charizard. It's now slower than that Ludicolo, but once again, he does have to worry about the frog. So looking forward, I definitely think that Tapu Feeny can just pretty safely go for a Moon Blast into the uh, into the uh, Ludicolo slot, trying to just pick up a KO. I don't believe we've seen any of the other Mons. Um, I don't think we've seen any of the other Mons from either or from Nate's side. You do see the Incineroar come right back in, intimidating both of these special attackers. Once again, not really making too big of a difference. 
but we do see that switch out for the Ludicolo, maybe revealing that he doesn't quite have that protect. Maybe valuing the damage output of it a little bit more than its defensiveness. As we do see that Parish Song come out, but Incineroar, as we did see in the last couple games, does have the ability to just get on out of there with a U-turn. Alright, and we do see Gothitelle popping its berry from that powerful Scald. As the Trick Room, or pardon me, as the Pear Song counts to three. So right now, both of these players are honestly not in a great position for either of them. That Feeny is going to be able to get off some powerful Scalds because of the rain, and the Cinderwar definitely doesn't want to stick around too long, but it does need to get rid of that. But it does need to get rid of that Gothitelle, so the Gothitelle doesn't want to stick around. And that Politoed? Honestly, I think the Politoed is in the best position it can be at this point. As we do see the Politoed actually switch on out for the Mawile. Mawile going to lower that attack of that um, Incineroar even more. Definitely not going to be wanting to go for any fire moves right now with how weakened they're going to be. Gothitelle does go for a Protect right about now. As Incineroar goes for a Fake Out into the Mawile slot. And we see a Scald going into the Gothitelle slot. With two turns of Parish left, um, that Gothitelle definitely is not in a great position. But if uh, Nate is able to call it correctly, or maybe get a little bit lucky with a double protect, he could be in a really great spot. So let's take a look at what could be a potential here. I definitely think that Incineroar is definitely going to want to get out of there. Maybe taking a U-turn and uh, just going ahead and returning to his trainer and sending out his last Mon. And that would also get rid of the rain there, making Feeny a little bit weaker though. So that is one of those not a very great situation to be in for either player. We do see that switch back into Ludicolo. Ludicolo most likely just sticking around just to get KO'd. And then go right back into it and then just protect again. As we do see that U-turn come on out. Picking up the KO on that Ludicolo. Allowing the Gothitelle to come right back in and just stop that... Uh, that Tapu Fini from getting off its HP or from getting off its switch to stop it from perishing from that perish song. Alright, as we do see the Charizard Y come back out though. Charizard Y is going to be setting up that sun once again, making it so that Mawile can't just stick around. And with the perish song counting back to one next turn, the uh, that Fini does faint, but it still does have the ability to get off an attack. And since the Twisted Dimensions have returned to normal, that Charizard is going to be moving first once again. Alright, so Gothitelle, not in a great spot. Honestly, neither of these Pokemon are in a great spot. Uh, Heat Wave will do a lot of damage to that Gothitelle and as well to the Mawile. But we do see a switch out here going back into the Politoed, setting up the rain once again and allowing that uh, and probably uh, just going to protect that Gothitelle just so he can faint the uh, faint the Tapu Fini. Alright, as Tapu Fini does uh, or pardon me, as the Charizard does go for the Heat Wave doing a little bit of damage to the uh, Politoed and Scald goes out into it. As the Fini does fall down. But Incineroar is still chilling in the back. Incineroar being able to go ahead and knock off that uh, that Gothitelle could be helpful. But I did see a player handshake, so I think one of these players thinks they've lost at this point. But I still definitely think this game is doable. It's not going to be easy, but I definitely think it's okay. It's doable. Um, if Nate does not go for the trick or pardon me for the Paris song, then I think I think he might be able to pick up this, this game still. But that relies on a player making a mistake, which is never what you want to have to rely on. Um, so at this point, I think yeah, he just switches it out. Actually, I, I was expecting that to just go for the attack. Alright, as we do see Intimidate coming out, lowering that Incineroar's physical attack, trying to make it so maybe that Gothitelle can live the knockoff. 
and maybe try to set up that trick room once again. Mawile takes it taking a lot of damage from it and the flare blitz does come out into Gothitelle doing not quite enough even with a crit as we do see that trick room come on out Misty Terrain does disappear but we weren't seeing too many status effects coming out flare blitz and uh, heat wave were the only two moves that really have a chance of being affected by it both with a 10% chance of burn. Taking a look at the future though, I definitely think this game it's going to be rough. But I definitely think Nate is in the advantage right now. With the ability to just go for Parish Song at the end of the day and just knock out everything is definitely very strong. Charizard goes for a Protect though, trying to avoid some of this damage as Player Up does come out onto Incineroar, doing a lot of damage, hanging on with 2 HP, as he does get heal pulsed back up to a good amount of HP, and a Flare Blitz will knock himself out at this range. Flare Blitz knock, uh, is going to pick up the KO onto that Incineroar, leaving this poor non-dragon to fend for himself. <laughs> Uh, at this point, though, uh, definitely Scald is going to be very nice from that Politoed in the back. And with no uh, way to get rid of the rain, it's definitely going to be in a wee, uh, rough spot. Another crit. Crit, probably not mattering too much at this point. Heal Pulse coming out, just ensuring that it might be able to hold on from another Heat Wave. Heat Wave connecting with both of them, knocking out the Gothitelle, doing a lot of damage to that Mawile. And now at this point, I think Mawile can just spam Sucker Punches, and uh, Politoed can just hit, set up the Parish Song, and then at that point, I think he's got the game wrapped up. Definitely a very close game, though, as we do see a forfeit coming out from what looks like Adam. Very close games from both of them. All right. Good game to both of our opponents, and I'm glad that we got to see it. And we will...